great to have your company for today's cricket show. Well, Shane Warne has revolutionised the art of spin bowling, and it's really great to see more and more young kids giving slow bowling a go. Paul Lockyer has this story. And he's done it. He started off with the most beautiful delivery. Gary has absolutely no idea what has happened to it. He still doesn't know. It was a delivery that marked the start of Shane Warne's meteoric rise in world cricket, a career that continues to inspire the next generation of spinners. Really good. That's perfect, mate. Between lengths, wasn't going forward or back. That's exactly where you want to be. You yeah, you go to any, any number of these camps around, around the country and you know, there's spinners coming out of the woodwork, whereas five years ago they would have been all quick bowlers. But I think Shane has, uh, has just been so influential in that regard and all the kids want to know how to bowl flippers and backspinners and wrong ones, and I think it's fantastic. That is. He's been the resurrection of spin and the, and the desire for youngsters to be spinners, in, not only in Australia, around the world. Everywhere you go, it's quite extraordinary. They're all trying to bowl leg spinners, and uh, that's fantastic. And that's, that's really been uh, because of Shane's great talents and his fantastic success. Yeah, that's lovely. Former Australian coach and test spinner Bob Simpson, who now helps nurture the bowlers of tomorrow, is delighted by the depth that has developed in spinning ranks confident that the coaching network in place across Australia will miss no one. Kids want to bowl spinners and uh, you could go to the back of Burke and if there's a kid with talent up there, we would know about it. The ball's got to come out and it goes slightly beyond square. For the exclusive club of ex-test spinners, which includes Sydney's Bob Holland, the resurrection of spinners providing plenty of coaching work. All coaches preach patience and perseverance with this most demanding of cricketing crafts. Can you tell when you walk into a clinic, today's clinic for instance, that one kid has got it and another hasn't? You can see potential. You can say, OK, that boy's blessed. But at this age, you know, what's, what is really uh, uh, talent? It's only something which they've got from the genes of their parents. Uh, from about the age of 15 on, then talent has, has to be then incorporated with uh, work ethic and uh, more knowledge. Spin the ball hard, really give it a good flick. I can hear that ball coming out of my hands like so, OK? David Friedman and other top-line spinners are encouraged by the dedication they're finding at junior levels. Ball, I think. It's called the two-up, two-down grip, OK? Get your palm of your hand like that, tuck those two fingers in, and the ball pretty much sits in there like that. Whether we're bowling off-spin or whether we're bowling lead-spin, that's the grip we should use. You have to have a certain mindset to be a spinner? I think so. You've got to be, you know, I think it's, you know, you've got to be prepared to, to take the odd battering now and then and, and just be prepared to, to, to come back from it. So it is a, it is a difficult road to hold, but, but I think you know, the good days will outweigh the bad if, you, if you're willing to stick at it and, and treat it as good fun. I think if there's only one Shane Warne, there will only ever be one Shane Warne, but there's people out there who may well be test spinners, and that's what we're really looking for. I don't think we want to clone a Shane. Shane's got his own style, his own ways of doing things, and that's wonderful. But on the other side of it, of course, there's, uh, there's all these other people who are just fascinated through Shane Warne, and uh, they want to bowl spinners. I don't think there's anyone you know, coming into shield cricket or even first grade cricket in Sydney that, that is anywhere near the ability of Shane, but who knows down the track, you know, obviously you know, in 10 years' time, we don't know, but there's obviously enough kids out there trying to be the next Shane Warner. I think that's fantastic. Seven thirty Tuesday, Dr. Harry contends with all new cases. They're all part of his family in Harry's practice. That's Tuesday. Then at eight, Ted's keeping in shape. Time. Come on, laps. Plus, he's got a full social calendar. I'm busier than the Pope at a condom factory. And he's got the basic rules of retirement down pat. Uh, first rule for a single retired bloke is let one go whenever you want to. The very funny bull pit. And don't wash up until you have to. Right after Harry's practice, Tuesday on Central. Have you read the news? Pantene's the one for healthy looking shiny hair. But don't take it from me. Pantene Pro V's been voted best shampoo, conditioner and treatment by the readers of Girlfriend magazine. Cosmopolitan readers have said it's the brand they mainly use. And it's been voted best hair care product by an expert panel and the readers of New Woman. So what's the secret of healthy looking shine? 
the provitamin B5 formula of Pantene Pro-V. The hair is so healthy, it shines. Now you know. What's hot on video? Michael Cromwell traveled to the Amazon. Piranha? Found to find his long-lost son. Wakatepe? Wakatepe. Now, he's facing the real adventure. Fatherhood. Put the seat back down. Females and tribes start war over this. Many deaths. Tim Allen. Ow! Disney's Jungle to Jungle. Feed my tika. What's my tika? Ah! Grab it on video. New liquid Nile's fast grab has been specially formulated, so it grabs with the speed of nails. And it dries with the strength of nails. New... Think of Ricky Ponting and you think of grace, class, elegance and greyhound racing. Yes, if horse racing is the sport of kings, then dog racing is the sport of princes and rovers and fighters. So let's skip the car park parties and head straight inside. Let the dog see the bunny. Ricky, compare the thrill of smacking a four on the MCG to cheering one home at Lonnie Dogs. I must admit, mate, uh, actually being trackside and watching your dog win is a, is a great thrill. And I was lucky enough when I got home from England that the first night I went back to the dogs, uh, I had a double at Launceston, so that was a, a pretty big thrill, yeah. What about the breeding side, mate? Uh, yeah, that's probably not too far away either. Uh, one of my, myself actually won a, won a free service to Awesome Assassin, which is a stud you, dog over in Melbourne. So. You've won a service to a... Uh... Yeah, I have, yeah. I don't know how, don't know how the pups <laughs> will turn out, but uh, yeah. Now, uh, the dogs are in the mounting yard here, mate. Uh, you're going to have to help me out. Uh, is there any owned by Sangster or Sheikh Mohammed here? <laughs> I'm not too sure, actually, mate. It's, uh, if there was, they'd be, pretty, they'd be pretty short and probably likely to win the race as well. And uh, I'm a little bit worried about the fashions on the field here. I've seen uh, Miss Victoria tracksuit. <laughs> yeah, it's not probably the most fashion-conscious uh, place in the world, I don't think, a, a Monday night at the Sandown Dogs. Well, actually, I walked in and the bloke said, uh, you know, have you got a jacket? And I said, yeah. He said, well, leave it in the car. <laughs> Well, there's that big hit over the top, and that's a very good shot. He loves hitting those. That's his area. Now, yeah, a couple of nail-biting finishes uh, in the one day so far this year. Uh, it must have been a great thrill to walk out there in front of 11,000 people and uh, get the Aussies to scrape home against the second stringers there. Oh, huge thrill, mate. Yeah, it was, it was really good to uh, you know, make a few runs against the Australian A side. Unfortunately, I haven't done too well against the other side so far this year. But Now, uh, your career's been well documented. It's been Ricky Ponty. Happy, 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 happy. Disappointed, happy. Yeah, disappointed there for a little while, about six months actually, when I got dropped um, midway through last year. Well, what do you think of people's assessment that that's just part of the learning process that you have to go through? Well, it's probably pretty right actually. Most of the guys in the side now have, have been dropped at, at some stage and uh, probably come back better players. So, you know, that's what everyone's been saying about me as well. You can probably learn a bit by staying in the side as well, though. Oh, for sure, yeah. You certainly learn a lot more playing for Australia than you do playing for your club side. So. All right, now they're moving in. Uh, normally I'd say when in doubt, back the top weight. But uh, I'm going for number five in this. Okay. All right, okay. Then. All so right, there we go. Right. Oh, there you go. Yeah, he's jumped. He's jumped all right. Yeah, we'll win now. Yeah, the six. Oh, no. Go five. Oh, have a look at that. He hasn't even got a place. Nah, he's ran fourth. Oh, he's man. ran fourth. You've done your money, mate. You've done all that money. I've had 50 bucks of that. You can buy it for 20. <laughs> it's probably good. Oh. What are the boys think about uh, this interest in the dog racing, mate? Well, there's a couple of us in the team that are pretty, pretty interested in racing, actually. I've got well, greyhounds. Mark Waugh's got a couple of trotters that are going pretty well at the moment. So, uh, you know, if we're not... Either of us aren't usually batting, we've usually got the Sky Channel on having a pretty close look at them. Well, during the day-nighters, uh, you might have something going around. Uh, is it a bit of a strain on the cricket thing? It can be, mate. Yeah, it gives me something to do when I get out, I suppose. Well, he's hit that one away down towards uh, the long-on boundary, and that'll go... To the... Not much pressure on you, mate. Is there uh, only going to be the next Bradman? Apparently so, yeah. A, mm -hmm. few, a few people have said that, I suppose, mm. yeah, but um, career's not quite following the same path as his at the moment. Oh, but... mate, you know, you wouldn't want to emulate a hack like Bradman. You'd want to set your sights a little bit higher than that, wouldn't you? It'd be nice to be able to think I could, mate, yeah. <laughs> You're a chance, eh? You're a big chance. That's right. The eight. eight. Yeah. Go eight. Behind. Oh, four still wins. 
Four still wins. How about this for a run? <laughs> How stiff have you been there? Oh. Oh, what do you call that? Mate, you're, yeah. you're no good and you never will be any good. <laughs> y yes, you, Ebony Rose. Yes, you. Mate, you're I a big chance coming around the corner. Talk, call yourself a greyhound. You're not even grey. <laughs> dogged it. Dogged totally it, dogged it. Fair enough. Fair enough. You wouldn't believe it. Out! Yes, he's got him for a duck. Oh, and that's out. Caught behind. Yes, he's got him for a ball. Ah! Got him! That's well ball, Shane Ward. We've talked about a few of uh, my favourite deliveries. Uh, this one's one of my favourite deliveries for a few other reasons. Uh, it's probably the most funniest and most satisfying delivery I've ever bowled. It was a last ball in Sydney in 1995, and uh, it was against Pakistan and bowling to Bazard Ali. Bazard Ali's a guy that uh, is a sort of annoying character where he'd held us up all summer. Uh, shoelaces up when you're ready to bowl, marking centre, walking down and touching the wicket. And, all sorts of things to hold you up and really get under your skin. We thought that it was time, or well, I thought it was time, to sort of just maybe hold him up. Healy is on his way down now to have a word with Warren. That might be partly psychological. They're chatting about uh, what they'll have to drink in the dressing room when they get back. One ball to go, I decided, I just yelled out Heels, hey Heels, 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 come up. So me and Heels decided just to have a bit of a chat and I said to Heels, oh, what are you doing for dinner tonight, what do you feel like? And we're in the middle of SCG. We've got one ball to go, and we're talking about what we're going to have for dinner. All right, now see if you can land that top spinner on the spot and uh, just have it hit the gloves instead of go through to the wicketkeeper. Could be the plan of campaign. So what, what do you reckon? Over the wicket, around the wicket, uh, leggy, what, flipper, what do you reckon? And he said, oh, why don't you try and do something special, bowling around his legs or do something through his legs, do anything, just try something. All right, all right, around the wicket? He said, yep, yep, do that. I said, okay. It was sort of just building up nicely and get to the top of the mark and instead of just shining the ball and then walking in and bowling, I decided to shine the ball and shine the ball and shine the ball and then decided to walk in and bowl. And... and I bowled the ball and uh, Bazard Ali said, oh, that's outside leg stump. I can't be giving out LB. I'll stick the foot out. Next minute, it hits the wicket, turns through his legs, it bowls him. You wouldn't believe it. He's done him between his legs. After what Heels and I talked about and holding him up, it was just so satisfying to bowl him. Well, whatever it is they talked about, you can bet your life in future it'll be, why don't you give him the one that'll bowl him between his legs? I suppose then you can tell by my reaction, I got the hoo hoo, here we go, the hands down and the boys come running down and we slap and give high fives and all that sort of stuff. And I think that was probably the most funniest and the most satisfying uh, dismissal I've ever done. He has such a fabled personality, a team has borrowed it to become more popular itself. Merv Hughes, the veteran clown prince of cricket, has moved his kingdom to Canberra, and the people are grateful. Got him, yes. Taken in the gully. Nice and deep there as well. So seconds as well. What do you think about his form out there? Or does it matter? Doesn't matter. <laughs> For the rest of the country, they're saying, why doesn't he retire? <laughs> How can you let a man retire who's so enthusiastic about the game and he offers so much? Hughes comes to the Comets after exhausting his prospects in his home state and that hurts his Victorian pride. I'd love to be playing for Victoria but that's not the case. Fortunately for me, ACT, have, um, you know, with a, a fairly young, inexperienced side, um, they've seen the worth of an experienced player, or a has been, as I've been reading in the paper. As much as Merv needed the Comets, the Comets needed Merv, a personality who could draw the crowds. Perhaps for the first time in recent years, Hughes is perfectly fit for his chosen role. Merv! 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 What do you think Merv's in today? About the same as him. <laughs> <laughs> What's he brought to the side? 120 kilos, for starters. <laughs> Well, they dished out 2,000 masks today and they had a Merv look-alike competition and I think just his profile in Canberra has, uh, has been very good. While life may have now cast Hughes as a travelling pep pill, it sometimes looks like indulging tired and emotional groupies is a big ask. 
But after all, he's been in first-class cricket for 17 years and passion for much that happens beyond the pitch has long since faded. To be brutally honest, I haven't, I haven't really done the work I need to play at this level. Um, I just think uh, a lot of the time it's just a passion for the game that gets across the line and uh, your pride in performance. And part of that performance now is to help the aspiring Comets. What has Murph Hughes brought to the team? Uh, a lot of fun in the dressing room and uh, a lot of experience for the bowlers. And he's been um, great on the trips away. He's uh, you know, provided a lot of help for our uh, younger bowlers. Uh, he's been fantastic. <laughs> One, two, or three, yes. What's Merv like to have around the dressing room sets? <laughs> Merv, <laughs> well, the first time he came down, it was funny actually because we were in a, in a touch comp for the Comets just to keep fit. And the first time we really had anything to do with Merv, he turned up and had a game of touch. And from then, he just fitted in like a house on fire. Meanwhile, commuting to Canberra has slotted almost comfortably into Merv's usual hectic summer routine. Cricket clinics, corporate appearances, endorsement opportunities and book launches. Plus, he's a new dad, with not much time to help his wife, Sue. It's going to be a difficult time the next couple of weeks, honey. I've got a bit of travelling to do to try and sell a few books, but I've got to get that mortgage paid off, so I'm sure you'll understand. Surrounded by his family and crowds that love him, Hughes can look back at his career with some fulfilment, but his fondest memories are reserved for those who will always see behind the buffoonery. You, you definitely miss a lot about it, the travelling, uh, the competition, but, but more than, than all that, it's def definitely the personnel that you miss and the blokes that uh, you know, toured England twice with, the West Indies with, um, the blokes that you play a, a hell of a lot of cricket with over a long period of time. Um, you know, when you catch up, it's just never long enough. Field for Australia in the early days. In the first test of the 1936-37 Ashes series, Bradman gets a duck, Frank Ward gets a broken nose, and England get Australia out for 58. They win by 322 runs, while the experts from the outer begin the post-mortem. Oh, big eye, oh, yes, it's out. Yes, he's got him. I'm actually getting bored of praising him now, to be honest. So uh, he's so fresh and so raw. He's just come straight out of school cricket and, uh, and into test cricket. And there's not many people that can, can do that and do it successfully. So uh, people will try and mould Dan, but uh, I think he's got enough nous about him and, and it's worked for him. Um, so people may leave him alone and, and just let him get on with it. So that's the beauty of, of him being untouched to an extent, that he can just come in and, and, and bowl without any complications. It's simple. A fresh-faced young spin bowler gets his ticket into the top grade after just two first-class games with New Zealand's Northern Districts. A dream? Well, a dream come true about five years early. It's not something that you expect to happen after such a short time and I, I was hoping maybe five or six years down the track I'd, I'd be in line for, for a place, but just took it as it came. So how did you actually react when you got the call? Um, I suppose I was, I was pretty nervous at the time. I mean, we'd, uh, New Zealand just drawn the first test and, and they're looking to push on and hopefully win the second one. But I mean, I just wanted to go in there and, and every, every person in the team gave me the confidence just to do what I'd been doing up till then and, and that was probably what made it so easy. Daniel didn't disappoint in his debut test against England, claiming four wickets for 97 in a marathon 58 overs. His promising form continued against Sri Lanka. In the second test at Hamilton, he claimed five for 84 on his way to a total nine wickets for the match. His prowess with the bat is fast improving too. With a test high 90, he's keen to progress. It'd be great if I, if I could be known as an all-rounder and, and bat seven or eight and, and, and get runs regularly for the team. But I mean, at this stage, it's just a matter of um, just being there when a, with a batsman at the other end and hopefully giving him confidence that he knows I can score runs and stay there with him. Not so long ago, Daniel was targeting a career in pharmacy. He graduated from St Paul's College and at that stage hadn't contemplated becoming a student of international cricket. I never got to university, but I, I did plan to, to go to university. But, I mean, I was going to study pharmacy. But, I mean, at this stage of my life, I mean, cricket's number one priority for me and I'm going to play it as long as I can, as long as I'm selected. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to fit in a, a university career around it. But if not, I think uh, cricket's number one at the moment. Tory to continue. Yes! Big shout there, and yes, Mark War 
has been given out. I'm not sure that he's all that thrilled about it. Perfecting the art of spin bowling is now Daniel's priority. He started out as a medium pacer, switching to spin just four years ago. I suppose I'll just try and um, keep it as simple as possible and, and try not to let anything worry me too much. And just, as I said, keep it simple and uh, don't let anything phase you. In control and far from overwhelmed by the demands of world-class cricket, perhaps it's Daniel's choice of activities away from the game that promote such dignity and composure when the pressure is on. Sleeping, that's a good one. Um, I enjoy, enjoy playing soccer. Play a little bit of soccer when, um, back home before the cricket sort of took over full time. But um, just mainly relaxing is a big pastime of mine. But Daniel's adventure to Australia has inspired some change in his life. Why else would he shed that delightful mop of curls he was sporting on arrival to our shores? Probably got a little bit hot, a little bit messy, and uh, just, just time for a change. It didn't surprise anyone else on the team. They're quickly getting used to Daniel and his unique ways. What sort of things does he do away from, away from the game that you sometimes look at him and just shake your head? Well, there's that wee game, you know, where you, you put your, your hand as, as a wee hole and you've got to poke your finger into it and, and just little games like that where he's just poking you and annoying you, just basically 18-year-old things which you, you laugh and scoff at but you find yourself playing with them. And it's like, I like being back in the schoolyard and he's just annoying you and, and just playing with your gear. He can entertain off the field, but Daniel Vittori knows he will ultimately be judged by his performance on a much bigger stage. And while his talent will only flourish with time and experience, his attitude is already admired by many, including teammate Chris Cairns, who also began his test career at 18. I think it might have been a little bit slower. Vittori's taken the catch. He's not as much of a hothead as what I was. Um, I mean, I was a bit... Um, all over the place when I first had my test, or when I started my test career. Uh, Dan's a very level-headed kid, you know, he's uh, nothing phases him too much um, and he just gets on with what he does and um, I think he'll be a very, very successful uh, test cricketer. Well, this is a chance here. Experience is, um, is a great thing. I mean, say another 20 tests under my belt, hopefully I'll, I'll be a person who's regularly taking five wicket bags and things like that. And, and be a major wicket taker in, in terms of world cricket. And I think, uh, I mean, time will tell, but I mean, I think there's a lot, lot more of me to show. Well, that's it for today's cricket show. We look forward to seeing you same time tomorrow for the part one of our special on the history of World Series cricket. Until then, bye for now.